medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram COVID-19 update. Really quickly looking at the United States, daily new cases seem to continue to slowly head down. And also this is mirrored in the daily deaths in the United States as a whole. However, in some states like California, we've seen some of our highest cases on a daily basis just recently. Daily deaths also really hasn't come down much either. New York is still the state with the most amount of infections. However, their daily new cases has really come down. And that is also mirrored in the daily deaths in New York State. However, in some states like Texas, again, we haven't seen really much of a decrease. Looking around the world, Brazil has really taken off in terms of daily new cases, and that's a situation that we'll be looking at. And of course, Brazil have the deaths to go along with that. Fortunately, we're seeing in Russia kind of a leveling off of the surge that they had in the last few weeks. And because deaths are usually lagging behind, we may be starting to see a decrease in that too. Of course, India, being a very large country of about 1.3 billion, is also starting to see an increase in daily new cases, now almost approaching 10,000 cases a day. And they also have the daily death rate to go with that as well. So things to keep an eye on. Of course, we're keeping an eye on Australia because they are headed into winter. So far, so good. There's been some recent discussion about face masks or face coverings, cloth face coverings, and whether or not it should be mandatory to wear it or not. And you may recall early on in February, the Surgeon General was telling us not to get face masks. I think at this point, the major organizations like the CDC and the WHO have sort of landed in their respective areas in terms of their recommendation on wearing face masks. So you can see here, the CDC has definitely come down on the side of the use of cloth face coverings. They say here, your cloth face covering may protect them, and their cloth face covering may protect you. And we will put a link to this article in the description below. And basically what they're saying here is that the virus can spread asymptomatically when people are just talking with each other. And so they say because of this evidence, the CDC is recommending wearing face coverings in public settings where you might meet in grocery stores and pharmacies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, this is a little bit different than what is going on over at the WHO. And here's the link for that. You can see World Health Organization. And you can see here it says, if you are healthy, you only need to wear a mask if you're taking care of a person with COVID-19. You can wear a mask if you're coughing or sneezing, etc. So why is there a difference between these two recommendations? And it may have to do with the fact that the WHO is also in effect for people in countries who can't afford universal face masks. And if everyone started to go out and get the face masks, then they may not have enough for the healthcare providers who are taking care of patients with COVID-19. Now, I wanted to show you some interesting research that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, visualizing speech-generated oral fluid droplets with laser light scattering. And I want to show you what the difference is between wearing a mask and not wearing a mask in terms of the droplets that you see with laser light scattering. Let's take a look at the video. So here it is without a mask. Now I'm recording. Stay healthy. Great. Stay healthy. Great. Less loud. Stay healthy. Are you recording? Yeah. Stay healthy. Louder. Stay healthy. Louder. Stay healthy. Nothing. So you can see perhaps why the CDC is recommending when you're in the store, going out in the public, you may want to continue to wear a face mask. The next thing I want to talk about is this website. Now, we've used a number of websites in our regular COVID-19 updates like the Johns Hopkins and the Worldometer. I think as we go forward, this is going to be a regular one that we're going to look at because it's talking about something that we're looking forward to, and that is a vaccine. So this is put on by raps.org, and raps stands for Regulatory Affairs Professional Society. And what this is, is a COVID-19 vaccine tracker. So this is a really nice way of looking. I basically just showed 50 entries. 
and I clicked trial phase. And you can see here they've got the candidate name, the sponsor, what trial phase that they're in, the name of the institution, and the amount of funding that's going in. You can search this. Currently, there's about 28 of these on here. So they're not all here, but you can see, we'll talk about Moderna. We'll come back to them about what phase they're in. Phase one there, you can see. But here's an mRNA lipid nanoparticle. Here's a COVID-19 S trimer with various adjuvant candidates. Here's another mRNA. This is the one that we know we've talked about before, Moderna. So phase one is looking at safety. Phase two is looking at ramping it up in terms of size and safety. And phase three, of course, is the randomized controlled trial right before FDA approval. Some of these are preclinical, as you can see. So when you get to one that you want to know more about, like the Moderna one, you can just click on this and it'll expand. It'll tell you all about the background. There's even links to outcome phase one data in this case. And so they will be updating this website every week or so. So here's the relevant information for the Moderna mRNA, the one we've been looking at here. But we can look at a number of these. It always goes back to the default, which is showing 10 entries. So if you just click 50 and click phase trial, you'll be able to see which ones you want to see. This one here, which is in phase two slash three, is the BCG ones. Take a look at that one. And this was done to prevent tuberculosis, of course. And we talked about this in previous MedCram updates where there may be some added effects against the coronavirus with these BCG vaccines. And we showed that that paper that was published from the University of Texas, it was a non-peer-reviewed paper posted in March on the preprint server MedArchive, suggested that countries with BCG vaccination programs at childhood are faring better in the fight against COVID-19 compared to countries that didn't. And if we click on faring better, we come to that paper that we talked about before. And you can see it. So I think this is a really nice clearinghouse for the vaccines that are currently underway. And if you want to research those, this is a really nice resource. I also wanted to let you know that Sunday night we did our very first live stream on the MedCram YouTube channel. And we'll be planning on doing this on a weekly basis, generally Sunday nights. We'll see how things go. But yeah, we were getting questions from the audience and it was a very nice interactive session. And we look forward to doing that more often. Also wanted to remind you all that we are active at medcram.com where we have many different other topics other than COVID-19. For those who are interested in topics such as asthma, COPD, congestive heart failure, EKG, vasopressors, CBC, mechanical ventilation, a whole different array of other conditions that are relevant in terms of treatment of COVID-19. So join us at medcram.com. Thanks for joining us.